Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. It is the Christmas season, the time of year where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And Mary, mother of Jesus, plays a big part in the story of the birth of Jesus. In this episode, I'm going to teach you lessons that we can learn from Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Mary says, How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. God chose Mary with intention. There were a lot of young women in those times that he could have chosen, but he specifically chose Mary. Many are called, but few are chosen. There are few who can carry such a big calling from God. There are few who will hold on to what God has put in them, not let it to die, see it through, see the promise, see the calling fulfilled and make God proud. There's few. So Mary is one of those faith heroes, faith examples that we have in the word of God that we can study. Imagine this angel appears to her. Mary was a young woman, a young teenager. This angel appears to her and tells her something that she's never heard happen before. She knew scriptures, but she's never heard something this out of the box, out of the ordinary, brand new thing. I mean, the Son of God coming and it coming through a human, through her, and through a virgin, a baby. This is, this is wild. And so she's getting this news that's beyond any kind of surprising, shocking news that you and I can ever imagine. The first thing she says, Mary says is, how will this be since I'm a virgin? She's accepting already. She's, I mean, immediately she's accepting like, okay, but how will this happen? <laughs> she's not rejecting like, absolutely not. This is crazy. But you can already see the first thing out of her mouth is, is of acceptance and is of just trying to understand and trying to seek more understanding. And then the angel explains how this will be. And then Mary says something so so profound. This is her response after this brief encounter with the angel. Mary says this, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. She immediately obeyed. She did not skip a beat. Not only did she immediately obey, she already knew who she was before this point. She already knew she was not a woman with her own dreams, with her own plans. She knew she was a servant of the Lord. She knew that though she may make her own plans, it's the Lord that directs her steps. And she wants him to direct her steps. And she wants to be in his will. She says immediately, I am the Lord's servant. The fact that that was her immediate response shows that she knew who she was. She was already surrendered to God. She was already saying to God, I will do whatever you want with my life. Have your way. I am your servant. I am not my own. I am yours and I'm here on this earth to serve you. Because she knew who she was as the Lord's servant, she was able to quickly obey. She was able to obey with still not knowing a lot, many of the details at all, but just knowing that God is calling her to this. He's calling her to say yes and that's it. And so that's what she does. I am the Lord's servant. Yes, let your will be done in my life. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mary had dreams of her own, like every single one of us does. Mary at the time was planning to get married to Joseph. I'm sure her dream was something like getting married, um, having children, and just having a nice, peaceful life with your family. And then all of a sudden, God wrecks her plans. And even upon hearing this word being spoken to her, she already would have known that this is something that's not going to be easy. She's going to be pregnant and people are going to look at her. I mean, she wasn't married. 
So, I mean, remember, this has never happened before, that, that God himself impregnates someone. Back then in the time of when Mary was pregnant with Jesus, if you were pregnant before marriage, that was a big no-no so much that people would shame you. She's already knowing these things, how it's going to be hard, how people would persecute her. But she does not complain. She does not say to the angel, well, how is God going to protect me? How there, people are going to attack me? This is going to be hard. Can I get married to Joseph like right now? So people just think that it's Joseph. It's like, there's none of that. There's none of complaining or trying to argue with God or reason with God or negotiate with God. There's just this humble obedience. And it is important to obey God quickly. God's looking at how quickly you're responding when he's looking to see if he can trust you with anointing, with this big calling that he wants to give you. He's looking to see the time it takes for you to obey. Do you have this heart like Mary that's like, I'm the Lord's servant, I must obey. That this is the most important thing in the world, that fear of the Lord, reverence for the Lord. God's looking at that. So Mary teaches us here that God may wreck your plans, speak something to you that you don't fully understand, that you don't know how it can happen. What's important is if God is speaking something to you, calling you to say yes and obey, the only thing that matters is that you obey. That's what's the most important thing. Everything else will come later. God will reveal more. Questions will be answered along the way. But first things first, just obey and immediately obey. Mary heard this word from the angel. That's just directly from the Lord via the angel. And Mary knew that she knew that she knew that it was directly from God. She didn't go and ask other people's opinions and say, did I hallucinate? What do you think of this? Should I say yes to this? When God speaks to you something and you know that you know that it's God and God is calling you to just quickly obey, it's important you just quickly obey. I can relate to Mary so much because a little more than six years ago, I was pursuing being a Christian pop EDM singer-songwriter. That was my huge dream that I had, and I had already released songs and music videos, and it was going really well, and I had so much support from friends and family. But one day, I went to a conference, and at the conference, there was a prophet who was ministering. I never had seen the power of God move as I did through him that day. And it was like God was speaking to me so strongly. This is me moving. These miracles that are happening, this is me. This is a true prophet of God. What happened there was the prophet prophesied to me that really my calling wasn't this music dream that I thought it was, but my calling was to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And I was called to reach the nations and that many miracles would happen through me. And upon hearing this prophecy, looking at Mary's story, I feel like Mary hearing this wild, crazy, strange story from an angel. And for me, hearing this prophecy seemed impossible because public speaking and preaching was my biggest fear and weakness. And I didn't have a passion to minister, to preach. So hearing this word, I was like, how can this be? <laughs> I was shocked, but I knew that it was God speaking. Just like Mary, she didn't question, are you really an angel? You can tell that she knew. And so I had this moment of, wow, I don't know how this will happen, but I know it's God speaking. And the only thing that matters to me is to be in his will and to please him. So I immediately obeyed. I received that prophetic word. And not once was I doubting. Not once was I deliberating, should I obey or not? Not once was I like, maybe I should get other opinions because I knew that God was speaking to me. And I also knew that it wasn't wisdom to ask others because only I had that encounter. So it was just the wisdom of God to just receive this word and protect that word, not let others taint it by bringing in maybe religious mindsets or just people who with spiritual eyes weren't open to know that God can move like this, that God can speak like this, that God speaks through prophets today. And also it's like God had hidden what was inside of me 
to very few. There was no one at the time that said, oh, you should be a minister. So I know that God really hid what was inside of me spiritually, what he had put inside of me. I knew he hid it from pretty much everyone <laughs> except for that prophet who prophesied that to me, including me. I had no clue what was inside of me, what God had put inside of me. This is similar to Mary. Mary just says immediately she has this encounter and she just quickly obeys. She doesn't say, let me think on it. This is a key of how to please God and how to pass tests of receiving anointing. And to be in God's will is to quickly obey. Don't pause and leave a door open for the enemy to plant seeds of doubt, confusion, and plant things that make you forget that moment when you knew it was God speaking and that fear of God was upon you. To instead quickly obey and immediately jump right into God's will, not delaying his timing. In Luke 2 verse 16, after the shepherds heard from the angels that Jesus was born, it says, they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. So what the shepherds told Mary was that the angels, they said, that night in a field near Bethlehem, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God. And the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognize him by this miracle sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lighting in a feeding trough. So then the shepherds then came and they told Mary and Joseph what had happened. And so Mary at the time, you know, she had this big experience where the angel appeared to her. And then after that, she had another moment, miraculous moment where Elizabeth, she visited her cousin. And when she came to Elizabeth, the, the baby in Elizabeth, John the Baptist, leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary got to see this confirmation of that word of the angels. Wow, like this is really Jesus, the Messiah inside of me. How Elizabeth, her womb is, baby in the womb is leaping. Um, she had that confirmation from God to just like remind her of his promises. And then besides that, I mean, she just had nine months of pregnancy and we don't hear any other miraculous moments happening. So these nine months pass and then she's giving birth in a, in a manger. There's no room in the inn. And so, you know, if you put yourself in her shoes, you could, you could feel like that's shocking. You could feel like, I'm sure she was expecting God to at least provide a hotel room because it's his son, the Messiah. He's king. He should be treated like royalty, right? But instead, she found this situation that God allowed. It was God's perfect plan for his great, beautiful purposes beyond our understanding to have Jesus be born in a manger in such a homely, lowly place. But if you put yourself in Mary's shoes, this is shocking. This is, she could have had a thought like, God, where are you? But then she has the baby, Jesus is born. And then all of a sudden these shepherds show up and they say, they say this to her that these angels appeared to them. Now imagine what a blessing that was to Mary. Like after going what she went through, this moment of a testing of faith, this moment of being like, maybe, maybe there were, you know, thoughts of like, where's God? Why do, why are we stuck in a manger giving birth to Jesus? Um, but then these, these shepherds came, what a blessing for it to be another reminder, another confirmation that this baby who looks like a normal baby really is the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, her and the world's Savior that she's holding, this normal looking baby. He was normal looking, you know? That's such a blessing from God to give that sign, that confirmation. And so the Bible says that she, she treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. So meaning, 
what the shepherds told her was so miraculous, so confirming that what the angel told her was going to come to pass, that this was not going to be just a normal baby, but this baby truly was going to do signs, wonders, and miracles and save the whole world when, when this baby grew up. So the Bible says she treasured these things, these things that were spoken to her, these promises from God, these confirmations, and pondered them in her heart. So she valued these confirmations and these promises from God. She valued them by bringing them to remembrance, by treasuring them, treasuring up these things, and thinking about them again and again, meditating on them, to meditate on the promises of God strengthens your faith because whenever God speaks a promise, there's always a period of waiting, a period of a time of process where God is preparing you for the promise to come to pass, for you to be able to carry that promise and steward it properly. So in that time of waiting, in that time of process, in that time where God is refining you through the fire, it's not easy. Time passes and it feels like so long ago when you heard that first promise and when you heard that first prophecy, prophecy promise, it felt like it was going to happen tomorrow and you wanted it to happen tomorrow immediately. So as time passes, it, it can be hard. It can be difficult. And it's a testing of your faith. Like even though so much time has passed, this promise will happen. This will come to pass. I have no doubt. It's important we are strong in faith in this way in order for you to stay on track for the promise to come to pass. The Israelites, they veered off course. They just gave into doubt. They forgot the promises. They didn't value the promises and they ended up dying in the wilderness and they never got to go to the promised land. Mary is teaching us here one of the big keys of how to see the promise come to pass. And that's to treasure the promises, the prophecies, to treasure the confirmations along the way that the promise will come to pass, uh, to, to, to value them and to remind yourself of them. You should keep them uh, close in your heart, like in the forefront of your mind. You should write down the, the promises of God and the confirmations the blessings that God gives you to confirm, and then return to these things. L look at them again. Think about them. Thank God for the promises. Um, envision the future. Envision these promises coming to pass. There was something that God spoke to me, a prophetic word through my spiritual father right after receiving this prophecy, and it was this, to ponder these things in my heart to ponder the promises, the big prophecies and promises of God, just as Mary did. And I took hold of that word. I studied Mary, what she did, and I took it seriously. I wrote down all of the prophecies and promises, and I put them on my wall, and I would look at them regularly, and I would think about them a lot. And when times got hard, when spiritual attack happened, when there was a testing of my faith, like it felt like even I was going farther away from the promised land and years were passing and it felt like I was going farther away instead of moving closer. When it felt that way, I would remind myself of these promises and I would speak them aloud and I would thank God. I would thank God for the promises that he gave me. He didn't have to give me these precious promises. I would thank him for these things and I would praise God with faith for these promises coming to pass. Instead of complaining, pondering and thinking on these promises helped me to not complain, to not get in this place of doubt ever, but to stay strong in faith. From the time I first received this word of God over my life that I'm called to reach the nations and many miracles would happen through me as an apostle, it was four and a half years until I began to see this prophecy come to pass, where many miracles started taking place and revival started breaking out in my church, where we grew from five people in the January of two, 300 by the end of May and 70 to 300 in one week that month. And ever since then, people have traveled on planes from different states to, just to come to Fivefold Church 
to my church in the park where we have services in LA. And as of 2022, five and a half years after receiving this prophecy of reaching the nations, that's when I first traveled to another nation to minister and to reach people for Jesus. And it's been 12 nations and 14 international trips that I've gone to minister this past year in 2022. But you see, those were years that passed by. And I know that what kept me strong in faith, staying in God's will, staying on track, staying in His timing, not giving up, and being able to be trustworthy by God, one of the big things that helped me get here was this key of pondering these things, of treasuring up these things in my heart, just as Mary did. It was more than 30 years from the time that Mary first received this word of God that the Messiah is going to be conceived in her womb and that he would do many miracles. It was 30 years till she started to see really this prophecy come to pass because he was just a normal man, it seemed, until he was age 30, until he began to minister and walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. So for 30 years, she was pondering these things. As she pondered these things and treasured these things up in her heart, she was able to see the promise come to pass. She didn't doubt God. She didn't complain, but she just stayed focused on what God had called her to and on keeping the promises alive. I declare right now that your faith would be strengthened and that all doubt would go away. I declare the promises of God, the prophecies spoken over your life to come alive in you now and for nothing to take your fire away. I speak protection over you that nothing can take you from God's will and that you must see the promise come to pass. May you walk in peace, joy, contentment, and staying in God's will, pleasing Him, touching His heart every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Last Christmas, my parents got to visit Fivefold Church, my church that I pastor, in Los Angeles for the first time. They're from upstate New York. And the first time that they got to visit was Christmas Eve. And we have this tradition of my parents and I of singing Christmas hymns together as a family and my mom playing flute in Christmas Eve services growing up every year until ever since I started Fivefold Church, I've been here in LA every single Christmas. So I got to spend Christmas with them Christmas Eve and sing Christmas hymns together with them for the first time last year in years. Enjoy this song that we used to sing before I received this prophecy over my life. Mary, did you know? And my parents had no clue that God was using vessels to cast out demons and heal the sick today, really. I didn't know it either. God opened up my eyes, opened up their eyes, and now they got to see their daughter by the power of Jesus, healing the sick, casting out demons. So it was very special that we had sung this song prophetically and then we sang it together after they got to witness it with their own eyes and in person. Glory to God. Baby 
Revival is now.